Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to Mr. English. Thank you for your continued support. And I wanted to go ahead and dive into this one because it is a huge part of the healing process. Right? And that is when we start to notice narcissistic abuse on the societal level okay because remember you know how the, how god does this right he reveals that narcissistic abuser on the individual level right mm-hmm all right and then in the workplace then in our family and then out there in public okay we're able to spot them and then also there's another added layer that kind of goes into all of that as part of the process, the healing process, is that we start to see that narcissistic abuse on the societal level. You know, as we, yes, are being chosen out of the matrix, okay? That that fallen world, the Babylonian world, okay? The demonic realm, the narcissistic, uh-huh, matrix, all right? That, when God cho chose us out of that, and we start to see, because, you know, get that, outside looking in kind of thing all right and so we're watching it we're observing and remember we got to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove and so that's all part of that observing more and speaking less so developing that discernment all right and that that getting god's wisdom and being able to see all right when god revealed these things to us because once we start to identify narcissistic abuse in anything, right, we wash our hands of it. Because we want nothing to do with it. Because we know where it's coming from. We know what it's designed to do. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so we don't allow it. We don't tolerate it. We don't let it. We don't let it, let it suck us into that. Okay? Mm-hmm. We stay with the Godhead. Okay, because recognizing when the narcissistic abuse is happening on the societal level, you know, that's part of the heightened awareness that God needs us to have. So that going forward, yes, we won't miss the stuff that we did miss before God awakened us. All right, yes, okay, all of the red flags. And then, of course, God can continue to reveal more red flags as he continues to reveal our enemies, okay? Never forget, that's how God works. Got to reveal our enemies first. Then, okay, then, over time, okay, especially once we're fully healed, right, then God can see that, okay, we, we've recognized the Jezebel, we've recognized some of the part-time narcs, we recognize, many of us start to recognize how the Jezebel gets herself attached to the minds of a human host, because remember something, without a human host, you all, I've said this before, and I'm going to bring it here because it fits. Without a human host, demon spirit don't exist. The enemy can't exist, okay, without a human host. That's why he's got to have these narcissistic abusers or flying monkeys, right? Because otherwise, the enemy doesn't exist without them. I mean, let that sink in, okay? Because... The enemy knows his time is short, obviously, because God's going to awaken us and show us what the enemy is up to and what he's doing and how he's got, you know, his demon spirit have control of their mind, the narcissistic abuser's mind, you know, that it, which in turn, okay, is controlling their behaviors, dishing out all of those fiery darts, the abuse, and things like that. And so, realize this. And so that's why God gives us the armor, okay, so that we can thwart those fiery darts as the enemy human host is dishing them out, okay? Because without that, there wouldn't be any of it, right? And so there wouldn't be any spiritual battle. So there you go. And this is why God prepares us for the spiritual awakening because he knows that his chosen are his soldiers who will fight 
to push back against the enemy and to be able to see what's going on in the spiritual and to sense when something sinister is nearby with that intuition. See, that's all part of the healing process. Okay, because as God is strengthening our faith, restoring our confidence, the healthy level that is, restoring our self-esteem, helping us process the emotions that we were, you know, that, yeah, we were forced to suppress, right? Because narcissistic abusers don't know how to process it, so they basically don't allow us to, okay? Because remember, the enemy wants people to hang on to that stuff. And not be able to overcome it, process it, and grow, and mature. Because remember, you cannot have emotional intelligence without emotional maturity. And the emotional maturity is that, you know, as you're thriving, okay, thriving and, and, and striving, okay, there you go. Striving become more Christ-like, right, putting away the childish thing, okay, all the, you know, Getting rid of the fleas, right? The narcissistic fleas, right? Yes, because God already put everything in us. Mm-hmm. He already put everything in us that we need to do His perfect will. And so we learned that, that according to God, we are enough. Oh, yeah. The enemy doesn't want us to know that. But as I say often... That's too bad. <laughs> okay? Because God's going to reveal it to us anyway. And so that's why we got to have that discernment and be able to catch it when God reveals stuff. And see, the enemy is always going to try and send distraction because he doesn't want us to catch what God is revealing to us. That's a big why behind the narcissistic abuse on the societal level. It's all distraction. All that chaos, the drama... You know, pulling people in a million different directions and, and, and pitting people, that triangulation, pitting people against each other and keeping them divided. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. You know, remember, the enemy, mm -hmm, he likes to keep people divided. And so, it's unfortunate, but that's what he does. And so, what God does when he awakens us to and from it, gets us out of that, brings all of uniting his soldiers, okay, to fight the good fight in the spiritual battle for the mind, so that we learn not to let the enemy get in that subconscious mind, because what a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, and the enemy knows this, and so, yeah, when the narcissistic abusers try to, to, to project their own insecurity and stuff like that onto us, and I'm going to tell y'all something. There's no reason for any chosen one to feel that way. Okay? So, yes, you can totally overcome that. Okay? Because with God and Jesus, oh, there's, there's none of that. Okay? So, we overcome that. We tell that demon of insecurity to take a hike. Because that's a low-level demon spirit, you all. All right? That, that demon of insecurity. It's a low-level one. Right? And, yes... You know, it's going to have a couple others attached that, you know, we did not internalize it. See, there's the difference right there. Is that once we learn that we don't need to internalize what they're projecting outward, because it doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the enemy, so we send it back. Mm-hmm. Return to sender. Rebuke in Jesus' name. And so we return it to sender. Because with the God spirit, with the Godhead within... That's not coming from us. Alright, so we learn this. As we're recognizing the narcissistic abuse on the societal level. All the mind games and things like that. And then the, the enemy is trying to keep people confused. You know, fighting against each other. And all of that stuff. And then we learn to live by Matthew 10, 37, you all. Remember what Jesus said. That he who loveth mother and father, brother and sister, more than me is not worthy of me. Right? Never forget that. That's all part of putting God first. Alright? Jesus. Right? We gotta love Jesus and God more than anything or anyone. Alright? That's it, bottom line. Alright? The type of love that we have for one another is a different kind. Alright? We have a 
deep love for Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit. I had a deep love for them. And so the more we are walking by Matthew 10, 37, yeah, the enemy is going to try, right? And I will share with you all, oh yeah, sure, oh, he sure tried, you know, aha, uh -huh, with a certain particular circumstance going on in the family, trying to trick me, not working, I, I'm, no, not working. You see, because I seek ye first the kingdom of God. God first. I, I'm not putting anybody above God. Nope. 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 Okay? That's obeying God. Alright? And picking up our cross and following Jesus. Yeah, the enemy doesn't like it, but that's... <laughs> again! <laughs> that's too bad! Alright, you all... So, yeah, and, and just as a reminder, the kind of love we have for one another is a different kind, okay? Once we start to recognize that narcissistic abuse on a societal level, you know, that is when we start connecting more dots. And I mean in big ways. Oh, yeah, big way. Because once we recognize slander, gossip, Mm-hmm. Yep. That triangulation I mentioned at the beginning. Uh-huh. Yep. We start to see that. And that we learn this is the world stage. And that a lot of this stuff is made up out there. Mm-hmm. And then we learn that the enemy is using the Bible as a movie script. In a literal sense. Okay? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Those of us who went down the rabbit hole... Yeah, we saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, the enemy's got his, his uh, minion making paintings and drawing and trying to convince us that the enemy looks a certain way with, like, these big horns and, and the red face and all of that. And we learned that, mm, 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 what does the enemy look like? Every single narcissistic abuser out there. That's what the enemy looks like. Bottom line. Same concept applies to why we don't know what God and Jesus look like. Why? Because he looks like all of us chosen ones out here. You see? Yes. It's why we don't have an actual picture. Oh yeah, the enemy would like to, you know, convince people that that, you know, those images of Jesus that are floating around... Yeah, that, that's what Jesus actually looked like, but... Uh-uh. When Jesus rose in spirit... Remember that. And I talk more about that over on the Patreon channel. And as a reminder, you all... The Patreon channel is where we do take a dive. It, yeah, it's a little bit deeper. Okay? Where I'm making real-world connections with the Matrix, the world stage, and the spiritual realm, and spiritual battle. Okay, and I also have some sermons over there. Alright, yes. And that's also a platform for those who would like to further support this ministry. You know, highly appreciate y'all. Okay? And so we're, gonna, we're constantly building. Okay? To get that information to you. Mm-hmm. And we are connecting dots to narcissistic abuse on the societal level. Alright, so that's, that's a lot of what's over there. And then also, some, you know, more of God's spiritual truths about what's been going on for years. You know? The lie, the deceit, all the stuff that, that we were taught to believe was reality. And then we realized that when God awakens us to and from the abuse, and then we start connecting those dots. And we realize that, wow, none of that's true. We co-create our reality with our creator in his reality, in God's reality. Remember how he tells us, you know, we got to keep our Lord good about in truth, right? And also we got to continue to do all 
to keep standing upright in the Lord. Okay? So, I also have the generic, a short form and long form armor up prayer over there on the Patreon channel as well. And in them, there is that keep our loin girded about in truth. God's truth. God's reality. As we continue to do all to keep standing upright in the Lord. That's right. It's all part of that, seeking ye first the kingdom of God. Because when we do that, that's when we can start seeing this stuff. Remember? Because when you seek ye first the kingdom of God, all shall be added unto you. So that's what God's going to reveal all. And that helps us fully heal. It's part of the process. Because once we see it, we can't unsee it. And so we realize just how backwards and upside down that matrix is. <laughs> and how slow moving it really is. Aha. Uh -huh. That it does not move as fast as we all once thought. You know what I'm saying? Like how we were taught and how people would put it on us and say, Oh, we gotta we gotta hurry up and get this done, hurry up and get that done and, and it's like what No. Many of us never ever like to feel rushed. Okay? And so once we get in God's reality and we realize, oh, then we get in our purpose and we realize that God didn't say we gotta have it all figured out. We just got to trust that he already has. That's it. And keep letting him guide our steps. As he reveals more of the spiritual truths of what's going on in the world. Which, by the way, again, for those who have not heard it yet, is the devil's playground. Oh yeah, it sure is. And after all... What, what what do little toddlers on a playground like to have? Playmates. So that would be another reason why the enemy can't stand it when God awakens us. Because he loses a playmate. There you go. Because we stop playing. Yep. We stop playing the game of narcissism. Once we realize that that's what's going on. So the enemy loses a playmate. Mm -hmm. So the narcissistic abuser loses a playmate. Ah, yes. And we start to see it on the societal level. As always, if you've got any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. Check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Till next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.